guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I want to talk about my experience with drugs. Jesus Christ, how long have I been taking drugs for now? Quite a long time. Ten years. Um, I'm not proud of it, but it's a coping mechanism. Um, sometimes I get really depressed, feel isolated, feel strange, feel lonely. Um, and yeah, well, I'm eating heavily as well, as you can just tell. But um, I sometimes do take drugs, I'm not going to lie, um, because it's a, it's a coping mechanism, it's a way it helps me deal with everyday life. Repeat myself twice then. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have found it hard. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, drugs has caused me a lot of mental health issues. People that take drugs you need to know what this does to you because I don't think the majority out there people realise what they're doing, what drugs can actually cause and like the effects it has on you. So I'll give you a prime example. Um, a methadone user would obviously inject quite a lot but to the point where you are injecting more frequently because you want to get that high. Drugs, I wouldn't recommend it. It is illegal for a reason. You get dodgy drug dealers that will rip you off. I remember getting some crap ages ago and they ripped me off for like £60 and it was like a ball of like that of fucking cocaine and end cap. You just don't want to be doing that. You really don't because... Why you throw taxpayers' money down the drain? What? Why? So, I'm lucky I get given it. If I want it, I know where this particular guy is. I go to his house, Wolverhampton. Whoopie I get high now and again, once in a blue moon. But it's something I wouldn't be doing every day. You are risking your life. If this video stops people from injecting and killing themselves over... Silly little miss, like silly little misfortunes or mishaps in people's lives, then I've done the right thing. MCAT is very dangerous. I started injecting MCAT now a year ago, and how it has affected me psychologically is not good. I remember few months ago when I was trying to make YouTube videos. I took all my YouTube videos off because I noticed something. When I was talking, this part of my bottom of my lip would not move. But possibly, yeah. What's the will? No problem. That's all right. I remember the effect it had on my mental health. I remember waking up to the point of feeling scared. I had quite a fast heart rate. I remember trying to do things that a normal person would be able to do on a daily basis. So I try not to get upset talking about this. I remember trying to do something like normal activities and I couldn't. I couldn't do normal activities because my heart was racing too fast. And that's why drugs are illegal, because they are dangerous. They are mixed with chemicals that you don't know what's in them. I know there's this particular guy in Norwich that is a well-known drug dealer. And if he's not careful, one day, I'm not going to name names for legal reasons. I think the police are on to him already. But he lives in the city centre. Um... He rips people off sometimes, so I hear, and he mixes things in with, in with the drugs that can obviously cause a heart attack or cause people problems. And I've been on the end of that before because a while ago, once I tried some MCA off this particular individual up in Birmingham, I just remember going funny. Me and the other guy that I was with at the time, my friend, we just remember injecting this stuff and I just went completely good at it. MCAT, any type of drug that you put into your body, is not meant to be in, in your body. I actually found out that MCAT is made with um, plant fertiliser. 
So you're actually putting plant fertilizer into your body, which is extremely dangerous. So food, plant fertilizer, got it, tried to say it. Food, plant fertilizer is food that is based for plants, not for human beings, obviously. Not for human consumption. I think it's sad that people like myself have to sometimes suffer or feel lonely, lost, depressed. They feel like there's no way out. And if it wasn't for me with drugs, it would have either been me self-harming, because a while ago, me and my ex-boyfriend did used to self-harm. I'm not proud of it. It's something I won't be doing again. But I'm telling you now, guys, um, it's been a roller coaster of a ride for me. It's been a learning curve. And if I can help make this video and stop half the nation taking drugs, then, like I've already said, I've, I've done my part. I've done, I've done what I've planned to help. I, I, I do YouTube as well to not only just help myself and better myself now as a person, but I'm a very caring, loving person and I care about other people too, especially lots of people out there at the minute dying from the COVID pandemic. I hope everybody is well and hope everybody can get better soon. But yeah, um, sorry I get lost on what I'm trying to say sometimes because my head is... But um, I've now gone for about two, three weeks, which is not long to be fair without a particular drug, which I can easily get my hands on. But it's horrible because you know the temptation is there. Like, and obviously the chemists, they give out the free stuff. They give out fucking needles. They give out stuff. Look, I'm going to show you something. I was not doing this a few years, sorry, it took a bit longer, did it? I was not doing that a few years ago. And to think that, obviously I now take my anger, my frustration out on myself, which I shouldn't be doing really because I'm the only person I'm hurting is myself. That's what I do now anyway. So if I get angry, if I get hurt, if I get lost, I speak to Samaritans, I speak to my parents, but... We all get lost, guys. We all deserve second chances. And drugs, for me, I wouldn't waste taxpayers' money on it. So if you are thinking about being a druggie or a full-time drug user, just realise that it costs a lot of money. Like, you're looking about £80 for a gram of fucking Coke. Um, one of my friends was saying that Coke is apparently better for you. No, it's not. I know, I know the ins and outs when it comes to the law and drugs. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is actually broken. But you'd imagine that's a needle. Normally I would have about... Shit, it's actually broken. <laughs> but I would normally have about... This much now. Of what I have. And then obviously the rest gets filled up with... Boiling up water. But, you know, you need to be careful because I remember ages ago, six months ago, I remember going to a nice, um, it wasn't a party, going to a friend's house. We all had some safe chems. Um, we, we all had a safe chem sex, basically. And the guys that were in the room were injecting crystal meth, gay men, that much into their veins. Now, I'm telling you now, if you inject that much crystal meth into your veins, MCAT, heroin, I don't care what anyone says. I was admitted to hospital at least two or three times. I had that much crystal meth in my body. Methamphetamine was also found in my blood. Methamphetamine, yeah, so it's methamphetamine speed and something else. I could have died. So please be careful when you do go to gay chems parties, be assured that they don't put in other stuff in with the drugs. And when when it all 
went wrong and I needed an ambulance, obviously I called an ambulance at my own flat, I was found downstairs convulsing and fitting. Um, unfortunately, my probation worker, bless her heart, she had to hear me scream in an agony a few months ago, fall down the stairs of my supposed friend's house. Um, yeah, I was left in agony and I, was, I almost died, guys. That's, that's the truth. So if you're going to these gay chems parties and they are organised chem sessions, whether they're in somebody's house, not a party, sorry, but a chems, gay chem sex, we all know what it is. It's where loads of gay men go in a particular house, like a brothel, and um, you get it off, basically. But, you know, it was nice. I'm not going to lie. The house was beautiful. They were a nice couple. I was grateful to meet them. But I tell you what I didn't expect. I didn't expect that much of bloody crystal meth, sorry, that much of crystal meth was injected into my arms, this one here, still got the scar, and uh, yeah, this drugs, oh, I'm going to say this again, drugs are not worth it, you can do better things in life to get a high, you can go to Thought Park and you can go on a roller coaster to get a high, guys, that's the sad thing. You can go to Thorpe Park for the day, you can go to Alton Towers and go on a roller coaster. You can you can literally go to theme park. I would rather someone out there pay for me to go to Thorpe Park for the day or wherever and get high off a ride. Like that thrill, that exhilarating thrill that drug users, ex-drug users or people like myself crave. You can get that off a thrill ride. So when you think next time of somebody injecting drugs, just remember, you like the thrill. What is it the part that I love about MCAT? Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. When I'm having safe, protected sex, it's the feeling that it gives you. The first time I got injected with MCAT, a few years ago now, it was a year ago. I'm not going to name this guy's name for legal reasons, but I went to this guy's house in Lizelle's Road in Birmingham, and it was um, a nice flat, to be fair. And um, I went to this guy's house. He injected me with MCAT for the first time. And it felt amazing. I'm not going to lie to you. I had sex um, with him and some other guys. Protected sex. Protected sex. Safe protected sex. <laughs> Keep talking over myself. Oh, well. And it felt amazing. And I just remember not my heart. My heart wasn't racing. I just we had this like exhilarating thrill there was no like me panicking or anything there was like do you know what I mean but now every day I'm left with the psychological effects what drugs has done to me it has fucked me up for life um for the next year two years or so and I've been very close to death I've been very close to passing out I remember a few times as well when I have taken drugs or what when I haven't taken drugs you still feel like shit or some days you feel like you go outside to do the groceries and you can't do groceries because as soon as you go out and do shopping, you feel like shit. You feel like you're going to have a panic attack. I can't now go into a supermarket without somebody with me. The guy that I'm seeing in a minute, lovely guy, by the way. Yes, I'm seeing someone else. Pal, the guy that I was seeing before him, language barrier, lovely guy. But, um... I've moved ship, <laughs> jumped ship very quickly. <laughs> but the psychological effects as well, drugs have on the brain as well, it's not good. Um, drugs make you feel high for the time that you're on them, but as soon as you, the come down guys, I'm going to tell you now, the come down, is a killer. The come down is the worst thing of all. So if you think, well, taking them is bad, wait till you wake up in the morning and that come down hits you straight away. There's people that I've known. One of my friends, I'm not going to name for legal reasons, he came round to my house when I used to live in Eddington. The reason why I move about quite a lot is because, yes, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm a guy that likes to keep myself to myself, but there have there have been other tenants that have been quite nasty to me. I'm not going to lie. There was an instance um, that happened quite reg um, recently in Borsal Heath where I was just moved from. 
and um, the landlord was very homophobic towards me, called me an effing batty man, um, threatened to come down and beat the living shit out of me, all because I moved rooms in the house when I wasn't allowed to move room, basically. But I already cleared it with my support worker that I could move rooms. But according to this um, particular horrible man that owns this business, well, he won't be owning it for long because it's going to be shut down. But, um, yeah, he uh, basically, you know, also gave me the mouth, effectively, you know, and said that I wasn't allowed to move rooms. But, unfortunately, welcome to shared living, welcome to supportive living and HMOs. So, yeah. By Christmas, I want to be in my own flat. That's the goal. Anyways, let me continue. So, yeah, drugs are very dangerous. Um, I damaged my central nervous system. So, the body has a central nervous system from your head to down here, all over your chest and shit. I fucked that up completely. Like, when I walk about now, like, you're going to laugh, but, like, sometimes in my videos, you'll see me go... And that's to check if I've got a pulse, because I can't actually feel my own pulse and how drugs and especially MK has fucked me up psychologically is that I think there's something wrong with me when I can't feel like that race or my heart like pounding because I can't feel not saying pounding but because I can't feel like my pulse and because in my mind's eye that that's that what that's not right to me because I'm not high all the time every day you know so that's automatically made me think my normal brain that with a slow resting heart rate think it's made it think that's normal, and it's not normal, obviously. It's not normal to have a heart, a fast heart rate, or a bounding pulse. They call it a bounding pulse, I believe. But anyways, guys, I will get there with my drug addiction. I'm speaking to Frank at the minute. They're trying to help me get out of this crap. Because one day I will end up dead. I will end up, I will, I will end up overdosing, and I will end up being in the fucking hospital. Um, and I will end up with my heart's fucked. But luckily... Um, even though I've got something called supraventricular tachycardia syndrome, basically that is a condition of the heart where your heart will beat all different rhythms. You will stand up, your heart will go, blah, 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 do you know what I mean? So your heart will go funny. Um, yeah, it's not good. It's not good for anyone. So yeah, guys, um, I'm now going to go. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um... I don't really want to take drugs, but sometimes in life, we all do things, we all try things, we all, it's all trial and error, but to the point now, like, I'm scared, I've actually got a heart condition, and my doctor a while ago said to me, I'm playing Russian roulette with my heart, and technically I am, because when I have injected drugs into my body, into my bloodstream, my heart can't cope with it, my heart goes boom, 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 and because I'm on beta blockers as well, you're going to laugh, yeah? But I'm on beta blockers. It's a very dangerous combination. If I went on beta blockers, yeah, I'm on five milligrams of isoprolol, which is a beta blocker, right? I remember a few months ago turning up at Queen Elizabeth Hospital. I got out of my boyfriend's car. And as I got out of my boyfriend's car, I went to walk in and my heart was very weak. It was bounding pulse. And it just felt like I was going to die. Literally, guys... I cannot describe to you what drugs does to the body and how it fucks the brain up, but it does. It, it affects you psychologically deeply in such a way that I can't explain. But, yeah, for my sake, for your sake, for other people's sake, for taxpayers' sake, don't do drugs. You don't know what drug dealers put in these drugs. I know this particular guy in Norwich that does do drugs. Um, he puts salt, table salt in it. Table salt has been found in his drugs, which is fair enough. Some people do because that's how drug dealers make a living. They stick different substances in with the drugs. But yeah, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't approach me on the street asking for drugs because I don't have any personally on me. Um, but yeah, sometimes I do now and again. Have, I do dabble in drugs, but I try my hardest not to. I try and stay away from that kind of shit that you put in your body. I want to be healthy, not mucky. I don't want to be, you know, a person that dies from like a hemorrhage or a heart attack. Luckily, um, I've gone to get checked out at the hospital quite recently. And there's no significant damage to my heart. However, my heart is enlarged, but my heart's working like it should on the beta blockers. But if I reckon 
if I if I reckon if I was to do any more drugs, then as you can hear with my current voice and sometimes how I forget things when I talk, my current speech impediment, it will make that worse. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm trying to stay away from this crap. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I shall see you in the next video. I'm back for part two.